Welcome to Exploring Computing. Today's video is Digital Music, Part 5, Perfect Music and Alternative Formats. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some alternative ways of storing your music. We've seen that MP3 files and its related cousins like AAC and WMA lose information. Is there a way we can store our music and have better sounding files? Well, there is. And this particular format has been gaining a lot in popularity. It's called FLAC. It stands for Free Lossless Audio Codec. Apple and Microsoft have their own versions that have similar characteristics. Basically, what FLAC does is it takes the original CD audio and it compresses it. But similar to the PNG files we saw when we were talking about images, the FLAC compression does not lose any information. So if you're using FLAC, your FLAC file should sound every bit as good as the original CD. Now, I should caution you, and this is why I had the question mark in the original title for this video, you are still digitizing your music. So, you know, the original music was digitized. There are people that don't think 44.1 kilohertz for 16-bit sound is good enough. And in your homework, you'll get to play around with a couple alternative formats that store more bits and have a higher sampling rate, but those really haven't taken off. But as far as what you can do with most digital recordings that are available to you today, FLAC is probably your best choice. So here we can see the comparison of how much space a five minute FLAC song takes versus a five minute MP3 song versus a CD audio song. And we can see that the size of the FLAC file, 35.67 megabytes is actually a lot closer to the 50.47 megabytes of the original CD audio file than it is to the four and a half megabytes for MP3. So we're not saving that much space. We're saving some space, but not a huge amount of space. But the good news is if your dogs listen to your music and they miss those really high tones that the MP3 cuts off, with FLAC, they'll be able to hear them all. Okay, our next format is actually quite interesting. I'm going to play you our original copy of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony briefly. And here's Beethoven's Fifth Symphony played with a different file format. Let's see what you think of this one. Well, what did you think? Which one did you like better? So some of you are thinking, why in the world would I want to use that second file format? And that's actually a really great question. Well, here's the answer. In the original that we listened to, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony was being stored as a sound wave. And we've been talking about what you can do with these sound waves through the entire video sequence. But that second recording of Beethoven's Fifth was actually something quite different. That was a MIDI file. And what MIDI files do is they store the individual notes rather than storing the sound wave. So this has a number of advantages. First of all, simply from a file space perspective, the MIDI file takes up much, much less space than a sound file does. Keep in mind that with a sound file, we're, you know, we've got 44,100 samples per second. And so if a file is just a couple seconds, that's a huge number of samples. If you compare that to how many notes those couple seconds represent, well, they don't represent that many notes. And so you can certainly store a MIDI file in much less space. But that's not the real point of the MIDI file. The real point of the MIDI file is this. What we're seeing here is this is a program called Songworks, and it's designed to work with and manipulate MIDI files. And so you can see when we're working with a MIDI file, we're thinking of the music as individual notes. We're able to manipulate the individual notes and we can see the individual notes. And so if you're a composer or a musician, you may find that MIDI files are much more useful for your purposes than the formats based on sound waves that we've been taking a look at, like CD audio, MP3, and even FLAC. So that's it for this week. Next week, we're going to take a look at computer hardware. CS106E is going to go into a deep dive on how the central processing unit works and how computer memory works. And CS105 is going to start off with a look at computer hardware and then move on to take a look at how the internet works. I look forward to seeing you then.